Hey Knights, it's Kayla and Hannah and welcome back to the College Chronicles. This is part three where we're going to talk about our junior year here at Marion. Yeah, which is a long time ago. Psych. It was only a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really wasn't. It really wasn't that long ago. That's funny. Yeah, no, it was from 2019 to 2020 and we were juniors and that's when they had just started oaths and knights table so like knights table is where they have various restaurants coming in from like the indiana mm -hmm. area nearby and they just go on a rotation um it's cool it's open like during lunch usually but it's also cool because we can use our night books which is special because it's like going to a restaurant and using Marion money. And not having to go anywhere. <laughs> well, that's true too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, and then we had Oath, which used to be the Papa John's. Yeah, um, Oath pizza is like artisan style pizza. Um, and used to, like, it used to be a Papa John's. And then Knight's Table used to be a Grill Works. Um, so that was like all renovated that summer before junior year. Um, in the 2020 portion, like the spring semester of junior year, we started building Kaido Wagner Hall, which is our all freshman residence hall. They built it in a, what used to be a parking lot right mm -hmm. next to Oldenburg Hall. Um, those of you that are on campus watching this, like you know, um, I started from a parking lot, started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it's, uh, it's gonna have like a kitchen in there. Yeah, it has it's got a, like a garden, chapel, a chapel. A bell, no more bell sounds. It's oh, gonna be an yeah. actual bell. Yeah, and if you hear bell sounds in this podcast, mind your own business. Mind your own <laughs> business, you know, we can't help it. The clock's gotta go off. No, I'm That's just kidding. True. But um, but yeah, no, a, a real bell tower. Mm -hmm. um, back in junior year, some popular songs that we were listening to, one of them was Dance Monkey. You love that song. No, I don't. I really don't. Um, but that's just a personal preference. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say I was listening to it, but I think as a whole, it was that, popular. Yeah, that was popular. I liked mm -hmm. it. It gets stuck in my head. One of the songs that I also like is Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles. Any 1D fans? <laughs> He's not a part of 1D anymore, though. That's a solo act. But... 1D never ends. <laughs> it's always Fair enough. forever in our hearts. Fair enough. I was a big 1D fan. We both, you like Nile, right? Yeah, no. I mean, everyone likes Nile. I would just say my favorite, my favorite was Louie. Louie! I know, but I mean, like, you can't hate on Nile. I like them all. Mm, um, I like Nile. Speaking of Nile, <laughs> someone that kind of reminds me of Nile is Louis Capaldi, who wrote um, Someone You Loved, which was also really popular. It pulls at the heartstrings, even though secretly, I think I read something that that song's about his grandma, which like, love that. We love grandmas. I'm just saying, like, I think a lot of people thought it was like about like a, like, like a, a partner moment, yeah. um, but it's actually about a grandma, I think. Don't quote me on that. We'll um, fact check that. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, you need to put a fact check in this video. This is correct. <laughs> um, another thing of grandma's is <laughs> my grandma does not like me wearing biker shorts. Mm, <laughs> really? Anti-biker yeah. shorts. Anti-biker shorts. You know, one time I just showed up at her house in biker shorts. In, in junior year when they were like super junior popular? Year. Yeah, I love biker shorts. Yeah. Um, I don't use them to bike, but I <laughs> just, use them to wear. Um, casual loungewear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also back then, leopard and cheetah print started to become really popular as a fashion trend. Mm -hmm. I personally didn't get on like the cheetah print trend yeah, until yeah. like probably senior year. Now I feel like I do wear like... Do you really? Do see you? No, I don't think I've ever seen you wear leopard or cheetah. I, um, print. I have that one shawl that I wore the other day. You said you liked it. It had a turtleneck in it. And that wore cheap for earrings? I don't remember that. That's all right. That's all right. It obviously wasn't that memorable. Um, but it was really popular back then. Um, but similar to, you know, your loving grandma, I, hmm. I can't say I've always been into the biker shorts. Um, you know what I am into, though? Arguing. And that's why 
My favorite <laughs> class when I was a junior was at COM 223. Um, it's called Argumentation and Debate. I took with Professor Drew. Shout out to Professor Drew, one of my favorite professors at Marion. He was so chill. Um, he gave me this award that year. I think it was called like the Kellum Award for the Loudest Mouth. Like M-O-U-F, yes. Mouth. Um, Don't you have it in the office? I do. Oh. I, I had it framed. Uh, <laughs> um, because it's accurate, honestly. Um, but no, yeah, that was one of my favorite. I think that honestly, I feel like I've maybe said this every episode, but I would say that was probably an all-time favorite class I think you do that, that I took. Um, it was also the last class I took, one of the last classes I took pre-COVID. Did you really? Mm-hmm. I took it fall. Oh, I guess that year. makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I, one of my favorite classes is Management 325. It's the business, business consulting team. It's like mm-hmm. the A team. It was really cool because I was in a group with Bryn, which is one of our mutual friends. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, what are the odds, first of all? Shout out, Bryn. Yeah, shout out to Bryn. <laughs> <laughs> and second of all, you know, I it was pre-COVID, like I said, so everything was still like in person and we got to meet a lot of people and like we work with companies like we consult a company mm. and like we got to learn I think one of our uh Colleen Sheena oh yeah from like my group she's still like vol- she she started volunteering at the company we work well we were working for quote unquote did you all get did each team get a different company Is yeah that that mm-hmm. works? yeah and it was crazy but it's <clears> also a cool experience because I feel like all the other teams had mostly business students and obviously, oh yeah, yeah Brynn is a chemistry major. Yeah, and Colleen's like, I want to say theology, but I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and then we had Catherine. She's like nutrition and wellness. Interesting. So yeah. You didn't have a lot of business people. No, but it was cool because, you know, I've seen all the business people. We worked with them in one hundred nine, two hundred nine. Change the exactly. scenery. Get some new faces in there. That's what Marion's all exactly. about. Exactly. Oh, um, that was my favorite. I think one of my favorite memories from junior year was finally securing a job here in marketing and communications, which is where Hannah and I's friendship really blossomed. <laughs> I got that on me. Um, yeah, it really took off because um, you started working. You kind of started working at Marcom when? You were a freshman? Yes, yeah, spring. Freshman year? Yes. Um, well, I didn't start until junior year, and this podcast is about me. If I was you, I'd wanna be me too. I'd wanna be me too. Okay. And so that's why we saved it for junior year. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah. No, it is true. <clears throat> this place is mostly about you. It yeah. is, yeah. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Oh. Okay. Um, so uh, we like to call ourselves the dynamic duo. Mm-hmm. Partner in crime, yeah. besties for the resties, besties. Um, just because after we kind of started working here, I mean, now we're inseparable. Like, who, <laughs> who would want to do a podcast with me other than Hannah? Probably no one. I definitely had a choice. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I remember this, like, specific moment. Like, I think... Because you, when did you start working in Marco? It, it was the, this, it was technically the summer. Okay. But in the summer, I was working two part time jobs. Mm. I was like part time a student assistant in admissions, and then I came here part time. Yes. But that would have been the summer, like, of junior year. Yeah. Okay. Because I remember it was weird because we didn't really know each other, and we had some beef. She didn't know we had beef, but we had some beef. <laughs> so <laughs> she, like, I remember one time in the calf or the dining commons. You, like, came up to me, you're like, hey, you work at Marcom, don't you? Like, how is it and everything? Do you remember that? And I yes. was like, it's good. Yes. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> yes. I, first off, first off, first off, shout out to Maggie. I had a conversation with Maggie, and Maggie was like, who do you know in this office? And I was like, Hannah and I, besties. <laughs> like, I definitely, definitely told a small white lie. <laughs> we, we just knew each other, and you yeah. were dating. One of my friends. You, well, you didn't know I had beef with you. No, it was just a beef I didn't. Problem. It was casual beef. Yeah, and it's casual. obviously, she's obviously over it, yeah. maybe. Um, but no, I did. And I came up to Hannah and I was like, hey. Bestie. Hey, bestie. <laughs> like, maybe could you get me in yeah. with that internship that you're working at? And she was like, yeah. no. <laughs> um, no, just kidding. But no, I do remember that. That was really funny. Um 
Yeah. And so now we share an office smaller than a closet. <laughs> Which we love, which we love. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Don't fire me. Wouldn't trade it for the world. You know what I mean? Um, With there have been four people in that office for like pre-COVID. We put four people in the office, but now we have like three, and we are in and out, interchange like times a lot. Um, What are some of like the best projects, like or like things you went to when you did your internship here, like junior year? Yeah. Um, I think one of my favorites actually was this like project we had over the summer. It was called data mining (laughs) (laughs) because we got to communicate Mm -hmm. with a lot. I feel like that really strengthened like everybody in the office, like our bonds Mm -hmm. together Mm -hmm. because we like, we basically all worked on it together. It was like a team project where we called slash looked up like different high schools and kind of learned about like who their principal was and yeah they're like staff yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was a huge it was a huge huge overhaul yeah and like like you know I think it was I I was just looking online because I hate calling people but I know you love calling people (laughs) and you were the only one in the office that would call every single one of your schools I do I um I do prefer calling over texting and I really don't I don't like like robots on the phone. So when I couldn't find it online, I would I would call and I'd be like, "Hello, hi." And we would just all listen to you. Yeah. (laughs) And then I remember Allison. I feel like one at one point was like, "Will you call my people?" I was like, "Yes." Did you? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think I called a couple (laughs) Allisons. That's funny. Um, but yeah, no, I do prefer talking on the phone, which it's just honestly easier. Um, one of my favorite things that we did that year was you and I volunteered to yeah. work at the gala, gala gala. That is a huge debate here. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. gala. Um, and I'll just tell this really funny story. <laughs> um, okay, so Hannah and I like signed up for the gala, and we thought. That we were going to dress to the nines and just be a part, you know, sit at the table, you know. And what it actually turned mm-hmm. out to be was we had to wear suit and ties and, like, we did some – we did service. Um, it was just funny oh, because – Yeah, no, it was it was good and we had fun. Mm-hmm. But it was just, like, we thought – like, we almost went out and bought, like – yeah these real fancy dresses and they were like oh you don't need that sweetheart like, we have an outfit for you and I was like oh okay thank you <laughs> yeah I actually um I worked like the front I know you worked with Ed mm-hmm. shout out to Ed checking people in <laughs> yeah I was in charge of like my main responsibility was to give corsages to the sisters of Oldenburg oh when they walked in um so that was like that was a super fun experience because they were like so grateful. Mm-hmm. It was almost like I had bought the corsages. Yeah. That's how grateful they were. And I was like, I'm just <laughs> giving just it to you. Out. I just showed up. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because my sophomore year, I got to dress up for the gala. So I was like, Hey, <clears throat> Kayla, while you volunteer with me, you get to dress up. <laughs> we got to sit at one of the tables and listen to like President Elsner's lecture and we got some of the dinner and I was like Kayla this is an awesome experience yes like you should do it and yeah. then I forget who told us but someone was like yeah not this year yeah which is fine like you know it was still really fun we mm-hmm. uh we got to go downtown yeah um and Hannah and I you know why we were looking good yeah in that. <laughs> we were looking good in that bed for sure um oh and we our friends Inga and Bryn were there too yeah mm-hmm. so the four of us were like Pretty much hanging out the whole time. Yeah. I don't remember what, what what their assignments were. Um, we did a lot of stuff junior year, but most of what I did was like learning because mm-hmm. Hannah had already worked there for like yeah. two years, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I had to learn like <clears throat> Adobe stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a lot of um, Saint Joe Indie Social. Mm-hmm. And you just do like Hannah's a big website guru. Man. I guess so. I didn't even plan on coming in being a website guru. Yeah. What I was just like, well, I think it was like actually that summer, like before the summer started, Maggie pulled me in and she was like, hey, we just want to make sure you get like the best experience, get like your hands in every single <clears throat> yeah 
little part of marketing that we could offer and she was like is there anything that's like standing out to you as like you like want to pursue that and I was like well I've been talking with Ed and maybe coding honestly Mm -hmm. which I guess like I don't know I feel like what I do isn't actually like coding it's like the easy version which is fine with me but then (laughs) yeah but then I just you know all of a sudden just became Ed's intern only yeah basically (laughs) yeah and yeah so I did a lot of web stuff Obviously, I was just starting, so I just did a lot of easy web, like, just yeah. learning mm-hmm. as well, but. Yeah, I mean, so, like, in our internship, our internship is here on campus. We're actually mm-hmm. doing this podcast for this internship, and it's in Oldenburg Hall on the second floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you've probably seen Hannah and I around trying to, like, rope people in for pictures yeah. or on the phone with you or, like, trying to get, like, a quote from you for, like, the mm-hmm. website or something, um and so social posts sorry yeah 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 and so I think one of our tips was like be nice to faculty and staff um we're speaking from a staff perspective yeah right it's like Mm -hmm. and Hannah can attest this it's like really hard to like get people to come and do stuff and be a part of stuff that we use to like promote the university um and like all that stuff and like so just be nice, like be helpful. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, and I can't even imagine because obviously we're speaking like for this tip from a staff standpoint, but we're still students, so we still have like connections. Mm-hmm. And even like us saying it's hard, I like I can't even imagine like how hard it is for like Sonia or yeah. Ed to get students. Right. Um and that's like their job. Yes. Like they need that. And you know, you never know like what kind of small connection Mm -hmm. like you need to kind of get in the door somewhere. And if you even reach out to anyone in this office, like I would love to help with this. I'd love Mm -hmm. to help with that. You know, they're already like, Ooh, this person is really involved in marketing communications or like wants to be a part of that. Um, And this is like the best internship. Yeah. I mean, like honestly being able to one, like be on campus, which like you live on campus but I was a commuter, which I'll kind of get to a little bit later in this episode. Um, but being able to just walk to my internship, I didn't mm-hmm. have to, like, think of a drive time. Yeah. Um, I can come literally right after class. Um, plus the people, the staff here. Amazing. Not even in the just in this office. I mean, like, literally all the staff mm-hmm. um, here at Marion absolutely blow me away. Yeah. Um, it's like I've never met a stranger. <laughs> you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Yeah. So, like I mentioned moments ago, um, that year I actually started commuting for the first time um, as a junior, and it was challenging. Mm-hmm. It um, one thing that no one really prepares you for when you decide to commute off campus, and not only like I'm not talking like you live on Winfield Mm -hmm. commute or like live on an on-campus apartment commute. I'm talking like I lived like right at the barrier of like the 465 circle. Um, So about maybe 30 minutes away Mm -hmm. um, is how you have to plan for that drive. Mm -hmm. Like you have to get up early enough to drive there, to drive to campus, find parking Mm -hmm. and then get to class and no one prepares you, you know, for the fact that, like, there, I mean, there are places to study, clearly, but there is no place to study, like, your room. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So, if you want to coordinate with, and if you want to coordinate with people who live on campus for, like, group projects, for me, that's intrinsically difficult. Because yeah. it was like, I'm already home. Yeah. You know, like, mm-hmm. I, you know, would, and with COVID, like, WebEx, WebEx changed my life as a commuter, like, 100%. But, like, in that first semester of junior year, things were normal. Um, and I was driving a round trip, an hour commute yeah, to lot. campus. Not including like traffic too, right? No, and not including, you know, the time I had to give myself to get Starbucks in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I know you lived on camp. I mean, you live on campus even today. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I've talked to Hannah about this a lot is, you know, I wish that I had, I wish that I had stayed on campus because I really, um, I didn't particularly need to move off campus for financial reason. I mean, financial reasons, yes. Like, you know, that was a nice benefit, but I didn't need to do that. Mm-hmm. I was just like, 
I'm too cool to live on <laughs> campus. Um, and I, I do. I have, like, a lot of regrets about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but not to, like, completely trash being a commuter. It's nice, like, because one – okay, one thing, and maybe you can talk a little bit about this. When you live on campus – it's like you cannot escape mm. school. It's like you oh. go to class all day, you work all day, you go home, home is school. You know what I mean? And so when I transfer, not transferred, when I went and became a commuter, I mm-hmm. could go home, take my tie off and be like, I'm done. I'm not doing any more work. Like, really? Does that make sense? Does that it sense makes matter? sense now. I never noticed that until yeah. like- I had, like, a huge problem with it. Like, I, when I was living on campus, it was, like, school, 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 Mm. school, school. And I couldn't, I felt like I never got a break because I wasn't, like, clocking out for the day. Mm -hmm. Um, It also has its perks, right? Like, um, you can cook your own food. You have your own bathroom. Like, you don't have to worry about roommates. Mm -hmm. But, like we talked about in the first and second episode, like, Roommates are the freaking best. Yeah. Especially when they're, like, your best friend. Yeah. And, like, I just don't know why I thought that that would be good. And then it was just a little bit stressful at times because I have a car that (laughs) hates me. It hates me. Um, It has no radio. It has no AC. And when it gets really cold out, which, newsflash... Like, when you're a commuter, even when the weather's bad, you've got to show up for school. There is no, unless they cancel it, which they probably cancel for snow about, like, once a year. That's what we're at right now. Um, But when it gets really cold out, my car door won't shut. Like, the driver's side door. Like, it will not shut. So I'm, like, slamming it, slamming it, slamming it, slamming it. At one point, I've had to, like... (laughs) <laughs> bungee cord it at one point I had to uber to get to campus I'd have my friend Jameson drive me back I like that. it because the car door wouldn't shut and I was like I'm not driving this death trap yeah. <laughs> on 465 to get to school um I had to email professors and be like my car won't start mm-hmm. like and that was pre-webex so once again it was like there was not another option mm-hmm. um and I feel like it would be hard, like you, when you said about like classes barely canceling, it's because like, I feel like most professors are like, like mm-hmm. most of my students live on campus or just walking. So if there's a little ice, why cancel? Right. But mm-hmm. they're not like taking into account like the commuters who have to mm-hmm. drive 30 minutes in the yeah. ice with a car door that won't shut. That is bungee shut. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So Yeah. Like Kayla said, we we have actually talked a lot about, because you're still a commuter mm-hmm. to this day, and I still technically live on campus, so we kind of, like, talked about our different experiences, mm-hmm. and I think that's, like, our second tip is, like, as long as you can, just live maybe, on campus. Yeah, live yeah. on campus. Just because, you know, you have, I, I don't know. Obviously, there's, like, financial reasons, and not everyone's, like, the same, but... Um, and this, this is not coming from an RA perspective. Like, I'm not trying to sell Marion. Um, but I just, just like being able to walk to my friends, you know, mm-hmm. late at night, being able to borrow stuff without having to like drive. And like the commute, especially. Yeah. I mean, there's something about the college experience that you'll never find again. Mm-hmm. Um, like, no other time in your life will you be able to access so many resources Mm -hmm. and so many people um and and I just gave that up like way too soon and like I said there's nothing like wrong with being a commuter Mm -hmm. um but the experience is totally different and you know what works for each person is different I just Mm -hmm. think like after you know Hannah and I kind of talked about it, it was just like gosh, I had the rest of my life to do that. I had this much time to just be like stupid, you know, and like live on campus and wake up five minutes before class and, you know, be able to go to all of those events that we Mm -hmm. praised so 
highly in the mm-hmm. first two episodes. And that's why we can sit here and give you these tips. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you learn, looking, you learn. yeah, it's like looking back, I went, I was just like, gosh, like go, I wish I would have went to a fence. I wish I would have known that nobody cared <laughs> when I was that I, you know, that I was a freshman. I wish that I would have lived on campus longer. Mm-hmm. Um, or I even wish that I could have lived on a, um, at an apartment or a house that was like really close to campus instead of moving um, so far away. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, I feel like, like we said before, you could just walk to Oaths and Nights and have like a dinner made for you. Yeah, and now, like now, well, and I guess like now, maybe like I'm even more sentimental because unfortunately like COVID mm-hmm. came, um, junior year it started in march of 2020 um and so anything that i and everything Mm -hmm. that we had planned that i was going to do to get back involved with the community Mm -hmm. here i wouldn't say it went away but the the normal aspects of it went away like you know there is one thing I will say is that access to events, access to class, access to stuff is so much more available mm-hmm. with like, you know, everything moving online, but like no homecoming, yeah, n- like not no homecoming in the same way, yeah. right? We did have stuff and I so appreciate that. Shout out to Cab. You guys did a great job, but we can't sit here and be like, it's not the same. So I yeah. think in hindsight, I've got a lot of regrets because it was like, not only did I move off campus too soon, that community aspect Mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't the same for the last year that I was here. So it was like, gosh dang it. I wish I lived on campus my junior year. And then I really would have gotten that full effect Mm -hmm. before it kind of all was abnormal. But yeah. So thanks for joining us on the college chronicles and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.